Welcome to the WatchGuard Rapid Deploy from the Management Server video tutorial. Today, I'll quickly define Rapid Deploy, explain what you need in order to use Rapid Deploy from the Management Server, and tell you how to use Rapid Deploy in a centralized management environment to deploy remote Firebox and XTM devices. Rapid Deploy is a cloud-based service provided by WatchGuard that lets you upload and store a configuration file for your Firebox or XTM device. The first time your device is powered on, or any time it is reset to factory default settings, it can automatically download and apply a configuration file. It's up and running with no local IT staff required. There are three ways you can use Rapid Deploy. Maybe you use the centralized management feature set and have new remote sites you want to set up through your management server. You can register your management server with the WatchGuard Deployment Center and have WatchGuard create a Rapid Deploy configuration file for each device so the devices know the IP address of your management server. As you can see, Rapid Deploy offers you a lot of options. During this video, I'll focus on Rapid Deploy from the management server. If you'd like more information about the other Rapid Deploy options, I recommend watching the Introduction to Rapid Deploy video. A link to that video will display at the end of this tutorial. Rapid Deploy for the Management Server is a cloud-based process from WatchGuard that is most commonly used by managed services providers and distributed enterprises to deploy devices in remote locations that might not have IT staff present to help with the initial configuration. With this Rapid Deploy option, instead of manually provisioning a device before sending it to another location, you can create and store configuration data in the cloud and have the device shipped directly to its destination. Once it is powered on and connected to the Internet, the device can download its basic configuration settings, which connects it to the management server. Before I go into detail about the Rapid Deploy from the management server process, I want to mention a few prerequisites and requirements you should be aware of. You must have WatchGuard Management Server version 11.6.3 or later, and WatchGuard System Manager must be installed on your workstation. You also need to have one or more cloud-ready devices with FireWare XTM OS version 11.6.3 or later. The diagram you see here illustrates the Rapid Deploy from the Management Server procedure, which starts with registering your Management Server with the WatchGuard portal, and then logging in to the WatchGuard Deployment Center to verify whether your Management Server registration was successful. Then, you'll navigate to the Deployment Center and import your list of Firebox or XTM devices. When you connect the device or devices that were included in the list you imported to the Deployment Center to power and the Internet, each device contacts the Deployment Center to download a basic configuration file that identifies the management server. Each device then contacts the management server, which contacts the Deployment Center to verify that the device has been activated and assigned to the management server. As an administrator, you can then go to the Deployment Center to view the deployment status of each device to determine which have successfully retrieved the basic configuration file. After the Rapid Deploy procedure is complete and your devices have contacted the management server, you can follow the usual network configuration and centralized management processes to configure the network settings, change to fully managed mode, and apply a device configuration template. Before using Rapid Deploy from the management server to deploy your devices, you must connect to your management server in WatchGuard System Manager with an administrator account and register your management server with the WatchGuard Deployment Center. To do this, open WatchGuard System Manager and connect to your management server. Then, register the management server with your WatchGuard Live Security account credentials, like this. When you register your management server, it contacts the WatchGuard Deployment Center and is added to the registered management servers list. When the device is activated and receives its basic configuration file from the Deployment Center, the configuration file includes all the information for the management server, so the device can contact the management server to be managed. To verify the registration, launch the Deployment Center using your WatchGuard Live Security credentials.
navigate to the Registered Managed Servers page and confirm that the IP address that displays matches the management server IP address. After registering your management server, you need to import a device list, which is a UTF-8 encoded CSV file, to the Deployment Center. You can either create your own CSV file, or you can download and edit one from the Device Activation page in the Deployment Center, which is the method I'll show you. Regardless if you create a device list or edit an existing one, make sure the file includes a header row, contains no more than 50 devices, and uses the IP address used in the management server registration. To download the CSV file you can edit, click this link and choose to open the file. As you can see here, the file you download contains sample data. Go ahead and delete all the data, but make sure you don't delete the header row. I'll go ahead and make the columns wider so it's easier to read what's in each cell. Notice that the CSV file is in this format, device serial number, device friendly name, and management server IP address. The device friendly name for each device is located here and is a unique name assigned in WatchGuard System Manager. I want to point out that you must specify the correct management server for each device included in the CSV file. If you import a CSV file with a device that was previously assigned to a different management server, the device is registered for the new management server, overwriting its previous assignment. Now I can replace the sample data with the information for my remote devices. To save you from watching me type, I'll go ahead and copy and paste my device data into this file. Next, I'll save the file in a logical location, so I can easily find it when I import it to the device activation page. Now that I have my device list, I can import it on the device activation page, like this. When the file is imported, the Deployment Center checks the data included in the file to verify that it is correct. If any problems are found, an error list appears. When the import is complete, the device list appears on the device activation page and the devices included in the file can be activated like this. It is important that you leave your browser open until the deployment status page appears with a list of all the Firebox or XTM devices you have deployed. After the device list is uploaded to the deployment center, the device can automatically contact the deployment center and retrieve the configuration file when in a factory default state. In order to do this, the remote device must have internet access either by getting an IP address using DHCP or by using a USB drive to configure the external interface. I'll show you the DHCP method. For more information about the USB drive configuration option, see the WatchGuard System Manager help. To connect your device, someone at the remote site must use the included green Ethernet cable to connect Interface 0 to a switch or router that connects to the Internet. Connect power to the device, and then power on the device. When the device starts in a factory default state, it automatically uses DHCP to request an IP address for Interface 0. After the device receives an IP address, it tries to contact the WatchGuard server to see if a configuration file from the Deployment Center is available restarts, and contacts the management server specified in the basic configuration file. If the Firebox or XTM device cannot contact the WatchGuard website, for example if the device is not assigned a dynamic IP address or the device is not connected to the Internet, the device keeps all factory default settings. If you think back to the rapid deploy from the management server illustration that I showed you at the beginning of this video, 
You may recall that step 5 was to verify the deployment status of each Firebox or XTM device to determine which devices have received a basic configuration file. To do this, connect to the Deployment Center and click Status. The Deployment Status column shows the current status for each device. If you see a shaded row in the list, the Firebox or XTM device in that row was included in the imported CSV file, but was already activated for the same management server. Firebox or XTM devices that have contacted the Deployment Center for a configuration file remain in this list for 30 days. Activated devices that have not contacted the Deployment Center for their configuration files remain in the Deployment Status list for two years. It is important to note that the Deployment Center status page confirms whether the Firebox or XTM device pulled the configuration file, not if the device successfully contacted the management server. To confirm if the device contacted the management server, look here in the management server. When a new device is added to the management server, it goes into a default folder. Depending upon your network organization, you may want to move your Firebox or XTM devices to a specific location. Because Rapid Deploy assigns randomly generated status and configuration passphrases for each Firebox or XTM device after the CSV file is uploaded, you should change the passphrases for your devices after verifying that they successfully connected to the management server. Once you've changed the passphrases, you can create drag and drop VPNs or you can enter fully managed mode to use other centralized management features, such as applying a device configuration template. For more information about Rapid Deploy, visit the WatchGuard website.